it's the new creation show once again we are back i'm very excited today well as usual i'm excited but today i'm more excited because the guest we have today not only is she a pastor but she's a baker and right now we are dying <laughs> with the good sense <laughs> of what is baking in the kitchen but we're trying to be strong yeah pastor you're welcome thank you so much thank you so much for having me on set i'm very excited to be here we're also excited about what is uh, baking in the kitchen, <laughs> apart from being here keep with calm, you. Keep calm, keep calm, keep <laughs> calm. Yeah, so we're just trying to get this done so that we should start having our cupcakes. Otherwise, thank you so much. Okay. Um, in other circles, she is known as Mrs. Mtambo and also the CEO of Cake Heavens. So that is why she said she was going to be very busy. We said, no, we'll still come. As you're baking, we will still come so that we can oh, yeah. still talk. I mean, what is better than talking over cake? <laughs> now, yeah. Pastor Chilando has a very amazing story. Um, I think when I saw it, I was like, wow, this is truly the, the wonders of God, like the amazing things that God can do. Mm -hmm. Now, she got married and um, got some doctors reports that she was not able to have a baby. Mm -hmm. But along the way, you know how God is. Mm -hmm. God blessed her with a baby. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are here to talk in detail about this particular topic. So, whew. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, it yeah. is a, a breath of fresh air mm. that I can finally be, yeah. you know, be able to talk about this in public mm -hmm. it was a, you know such issues are not yeah. spoken about it eh? yes they are quite sensitive you can't just walk up to somebody because uh, you haven't seen them with a the baby and mm. just say hey mm. do you have kids at home because mm. i used to get that a lot yeah 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 so it's it's very exciting to to be able to talk about it today mm -hmm. and much so because i'm doing it openly now okay yeah. so i think maybe we can start from the insensitivity mm. of people mm -hmm. you know because when you get married mm -hmm. um after a few months everybody starts to look at you <laughs> in a certain yeah, way in a certain way you know maybe you, yeah. you maybe want to throw up everybody will be like mm. Mm. <laughs> i of think course. she's up or mm. what but how was that like for you was it the same it was the same because you know when you just get married okay people are different okay mm. and so you just put a little bit of weight obviously there should be something mm. maybe she's expecting mm. or maybe or she left the baby a little home. weight you keep, mouths, <laughs> you keep mouths open and talking yeah so mm. it definitely was the same for me just me and um i thought being away from everyone and everything you know because i was in Sampia mm -hmm. for some time and that's almost away from everyone that i know mm. so i didn't keep mouths closed even there it's mm. like they would send texts <laughs> oh, even just clients because my baking business started from there okay. so um yeah just in my interactions with people you find they'll ask you to say oh okay your house was too quiet today are there any babies oh, wow. are the babies sleeping mm. you know so every now and then i would have to explain to people oh no the babies are still on the way the babies are still oh okay 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 yeah so it was like that as well then okay so for um when did the baby come after how many years of being married that's four into our fifth year mm -hmm. of marriage yes because we celebrated our fifth anniversary on um don't make me forget here. <laughs> on, <laughs> on, <laughs> very happy with you. <laughs> on the 24th of uh, March, so meaning our baby came in April. So let me say after five years of oh, yeah, okay. of, of being in marriage, okay. that's when our sweet, sweet baby came. Okay. Yeah. So how important was it for you to be a mother? Did you always want to be a mother? You know, just thinking about this, um, I think it's almost, I'll use the word almost, every person who's married mm. that's almost their dream so okay um even if it's not immediately but at least maybe when i get married uh after two years you know of being with my husband or my wife i would like to now start up a family and mm -hmm. so um it was very important for me because i wanted to see my family growing yeah. and having being in circles where my friends are you know, enjoying their babies mm. and being a pastor. Um, so many people around you would maybe have babies or be in circles where mm. they're discussing, oh, my child now grew some teeth. Oh, my child mm. now is crawling. Mm. And you're just there. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh-huh. You know, you're listening to everyone. But yeah. You have nothing to contribute yeah. there because yeah. you can't relate then. So 
um, not for their sake, but for my own sake. Mm. I, I just wanted to experience what motherhood is all about. Okay. Yeah. So how did you handle the idea? You've just talked about you're a pastor. Mm -hmm. And maybe sometimes someone will even say like, mm -hmm. oh, pastor, I was blessed mm -hmm. you know, from that message. Mm -hmm. I had a baby. Mm -hmm. You know, like such things will happen. But for you also, mm -hmm. you're a pastor. And also maybe people feel like mm -hmm. you're a pastor. So you can just pray for yourself. And <laughs> yeah. you have a baby. But mm -hmm. how did you handle that? And maybe also mm -hmm. seeing newlyweds mm -hmm. like maybe someone just gets married mm -hmm. a few months they're pregnant and mm -hmm. they knew you've been married for some time and mm -hmm. still no baby okay and really the example you've given would happen so 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 often i remember because i got married in 2018 i think about 2019 someone one of our members then came to ask him please pray, pray for me or like a baby and we prayed and mm -hmm. baby came mm -hmm. i said lord i said <laughs> for someone <laughs> you know and they had their baby mm. yeah and so i'm telling you it, it was it was a very very tough 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 time mm. and um what kept me going really was 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 the word of god yeah. to say that it was easy <laughs> would not be the truth mm. yeah it, it, it was quite um a very challenging time for me i had clients because they knew i was a pastor they trusted me so so much and yes it would work out for them they would tell me no pastor can you pray for me? I've been married for two years. Hmm. In my mind, I've said I'm turning four years in marriage, and just saying you're turning <laughs> I also need two. Those prayers. <laughs> you know, yeah. Mm. So I got surrounded by um so 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 many of 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 that kind of thing. But what kept me going was um the word of God. Mm. The word of God. The word of God kept me. Yeah, the word of God kept me. Okay. Yeah. So what can you say was the hardest for mm. you to mm. go through? this journey what was the hardest point for you and what mm. are some of the things now when you remember you're like mm, mm. i'm glad that passed yeah uh one of the hardest i think for me always was um going to places and being asked where's the baby has the baby come now do you have a baby now i remember a particular time that i walked into a store and i was carrying one of our members baby mm. yes and then the shop assistant actually she told me that Madam, mm. like, do we get to see your baby now? Mm. I said, oh no, this is not my baby. This is our member's baby. Mm. Yeah, so such instances would really hit me. Yeah. Even in times where I feel, okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm calm. And I'm waiting in God's time. But mm. every time I encounter such things, like it takes me back and it hits me real hard. Yeah. Mm. I remember being on phone with one of... um my classmates in primary you know they called me because i think they wanted to ask something concerning some towels or mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and so um yeah we were talking and then the person goes how are the babies i say oh no the babies are still on the way and say ah you so bad i mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. every time you feel you're okay and you're hanging on when you get in conversation with such people again it kicks yeah. in so mm -hmm. During that time, I sort of kept away from socializing from with mm, people. Mm. And that is when I was, uh, I begged so hard because I would really take my stress and my emotions to the baking. Mm, it mm. kept me busy, kept me away from thinking so much. Mm. And yeah, so that was the hardest time. One of the hardest times, yeah, really being asked, people visiting and saying that it's too quiet in here where the babies mm. when the baby is coming it was it was it was too much mm. it was too much so when did you get your first doctor's report and what did the doctor say that was in 2019 mm -hmm. and how did i get it there's this particular day um first of all i told my husband i would really like to visit the hospital just for them to guide like what's what's really the problem mm yeah so i'll tell you this in 2018 when we got married later in the year um november they are about i conceived but then we miscarried yeah due to some negligence from this particular health facility that i won't mention okay. yes and then um 2019 i said okay no it's been a year now so let me mm. try and ask from you know get some help mm. and so when i did I walked into that health facility. You know, first of all, you must do your vitals and what, what not. Mm. So I walking in there, the first thing they say, Nam and I said, no. 
And then they say, na mwishiba, na chumwena pakwe ngeshi, the devil was at play. Mm. At na chumwena pakwe ingida, wali uh, uh, na problem makazi yaba. Mm. At mwina pickles. Mm. You know, yeah. So, <laughs> I sat down there, at mwani mfapo pickles, I said no. I went on Google, I said, mm -mm, how can she diagnose by looking mm, this lady? Looking you know, and that's how um, the doctor also wrote his own, you know, diagnosis and referred me to another bigger health facility and that's the time they wrote for me that i had secondary infertility mm -hmm. yeah so that was uh 2019 mm -hmm. yeah and how did you feel in that moment? that was that was that was the hardest information to have to to be received because mm -hmm. you know when people go out to a health facility they're looking for hope mm -hmm. they're looking for answers they're looking for solutions hoping that okay if i go there yes they may find this and that but they should be able to advise say okay once you do this, that, and that, this is definitely going to be sorted. Mm. But there I was, they told me, almost like a dead end for me. Mm. Yeah, so it wasn't easy. Okay. It wasn't nice, no. Mm. Okay, you are watching the new creation show and we are talking with Pastor Chilanda. We'll be right back just after this short break. <music> Welcome back from the break. We are speaking with Pastor Chilando, who is just from sharing her journey of being told that she will never be able to have children. And then later on, an almost fifth year anniversary, having her miracle baby. So before the break, she was just speaking about how she got her first doctor's report that she would not be able to have babies. Mm -hmm. But then you had a second report. Mm -hmm. And what did this one say? This second report still said the same thing that um i'm infertile mm. yeah so the first one said secondary infertility this one gives you almost some hope mm. and chance that you're going to have but this second time now in 2020 you know um it now says um, i'm infertile which almost felt like a dead end mm. yeah okay so i think i'll um talking about when people go to have mm. these tests mm -hmm. the second test you always feel like there's some hope mm. you know you're hoping for it to be different, different yeah. yeah but then it comes back and mm. it's just even worse mm. so how did this whole thing just make you feel did it shake your faith did it shake my faith <laughs> <laughs> that's a very interesting question mm. yeah um, a little mm. yeah a little a little I think it taught me something how to totally depend on God now in all this. Mm. Yeah, how to totally depend on God because everybody is going to have their report. Mm. You know, they ha they will have something to say. But um this is contrary to everything that God has said in his word. Yeah. yeah. And so this taught me something to say okay, truly every the source of every good thing comes from God. Mm -hmm. Yes, and God would not deny me my my needs as his child as his baby and mm. so it taught me one thing to totally totally completely wholly depend mm. on god okay yeah so then what was the role of your partner mm -hmm. looking at our we're christians but mm -hmm. we live in africa mm -hmm. <laughs> and just you know how sometimes yeah. even just from the movies we watch <laughs> you've seen how like when someone is not able to have babies mm. they'll chase you out of your house mm. or there'll be no peace in their home because I you want you. a cry of a child <laughs> we should have the cry of a <laughs> child in this house. Of a child. but what yeah. what was your partner's role you know i'm very very grateful to god for the role of my very loving husband mm. um something that maybe i haven't said before how that uh, before starting the journey or maybe the times that I was asking baby, I'll need to, you know, at least visit this facility, please, just for me to check what could be the problem. He would always point me back to God's word. You say, is your faith ready to handle the outcomes? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, deep down within me, I'm looking, I'm hoping that even as I go to these facilities, there would be a solution out there. Mm -hmm. So, I wouldn't say I was ready in as much as I wanted to, you know, go out there looking for 
help mm-hmm. yeah so but i'm very very grateful for the love the support that my husband gave me throughout these years and something i learned about these things there may be somebody out there listening you know it's important to cap- to talk about them mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. <laughs> they rely on the soap that you put in their food mm-hmm. maybe you didn't polish my shoes well maybe you didn't pull poly- i mean you know iron my shirts well mm-hmm. or wash them well mm-hmm. and it's that child that you're not mm-hmm. talking about yeah so please it's it's very important to be very very open uh with your partner mm-hmm. there are times i would ask him baby do you ever get mocked at work or do you ever feel mocked mm-hmm. you know he said not necessarily yeah, he didn't exactly socialize much, mm. but in the few times that he does, um, he he didn't get uh, mocked per se, but he felt it in that um, people within they were traveling somewhere, and uh, the people around him at that point began to talk about oh, in a way, in a one I want to me my child this that 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 guy way, you know they mm. ask him that, yeah. so what is he supposed to say? And then no, they are within his circle, mm. you know. Uh, in the working world, uh, uh, the professional world, and uh, they know that at that point he didn't have a child. So, yeah, those instances would come up. So we're able to talk about it, sometimes laugh about it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very grateful to God for my very loving, loving, loving husband, yeah, mm-hmm. that he held my hand through, through yeah. it all. Yeah, I think we should shine some light on <laughs> understanding men who understand. You know? Yeah. <laughs> because it's not quite an easy thing mm-hmm. to go to. Like you mm-hmm. said, sometimes in the house, they'll just be ancient. Not that you haven't told us the truth, yeah. but it's the child. It's the that child you're not, not talking about. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite important mm, yeah. <laughs> to talk about things. Yeah. So now take us through the moment that you discovered that you were pregnant. Yo, yo, mm. yo. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened this particular day was, um, you know, like we know now that it had been five whole years that I had been. And you know what? It shouldn't sound easy and... Mm simple to say ah, five years you know 10 years i always like to say that nobody knows than the person who is in the wait how long that period is even if they waited for two years or three years mm. it's a long time for the person in wait mm-hmm. than the person hearing it it sounds easy to you the hearer but it's the toughest time for that person in the wait mm. and so for five whole years i would go to chemist pharmacies just to look for testers, I would get, I test myself, it's negative. I test myself negative for five years. Yes. So now this particular, and I would plan, I say, okay, um, the day that I'll discover, I'll cry <laughs> because I won't be, I planned everything. Mm, and also you, ways to tell him, you know, I, I him. planned, <laughs> I'm going to get a mug cup. You know, mm. those, there are some mug cups that, you know, they are dark. Then when you put water, I think uh-huh. somewhere, it's, ah, yeah. I just planned a lot of things. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, so quickly last year, I decided to go to a pharmacy. I'm a baker, by the way. And so um, I sent him to go buy me some baking ingredients. Then I went away. <laughs> I went to a pharmacy. I said, Lord, okay, every time it's negative, let me bear this shame alone this time around. You know, so I went into a pharmacy and then I bought myself a tester yet again. Mm. Yes. Then I set an alarm. I said, okay, I'm going to test when nobody's watching, everybody is sleeping. Mm. yeah so i woke up at zero three i tested and it was positive mm. i sat there mm. i fell to my knees and i began to pray i began to give god praise mm. i felt to cry at that moment i don't know it was so surreal mm. you know so um i began to give god praise mm. because i knew that this one is a fight that was for me and god yeah hospitals failed to come through for mm. me but this was a battle between me and my god mm. and i'm so grateful which prayer didn't i pray mm. when i when i read the story of hannah mm. which tell me which prayer i didn't pray mm. ha tell me which confession i didn't mm. confess mm. ha i said lord today is my day i'm grateful mm. you know i'm so honored i'm so 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 grateful there's this song uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so mm-hmm. I said, even me, I want to go on Fuila. That's the prayers I used to pray to God. But little did I know that I was already actually expecting mm-hmm. until I, you know. So did you go tested. back to sleep? I didn't sleep. Zero three, zero, and I didn't tell my partner yet. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, it's still sinking in for me. Let mm-hmm. it, let me calm down. Mm-hmm. Let it sink in. Then I'm going to share with him. And that day uh, we were traveling. 
to Lusaka because we're on the copper belt now. Mm. So we're traveling to Lusaka because my husband had some work um, to handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I stayed up 0, 03, 0, 04. We prayed at 0, 05 to 0, at 0, 06. That's when I, I mentioned Without to him. Without even telling him the way you planned this. <laughs> Without even telling him the way I yeah. planned to tell him. I just said, baby, we're expecting he mm. said, baby, I knew. Mm. Look at such a man. Mm. I'm and without so grateful. doubt. Without doubt. I'm, I'm just so, so grateful. He didn't say, Manjo, you make a turn. You won't say, the mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. He just said, baby, I knew. Um, I'm just so grateful that we won't together with yeah. him. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. So, how's motherhood now? Motherhood is the best. It's, mm. it's so exciting. It's so fulfilling. Mm -hmm. It's so fulfilling. It's the best that one could ever experience if you want to experience it. Mm. Yes, yes. Because I have had friends who tell me, oh, no, I don't plan to be a mom anytime oh, yeah. soon. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's it's the best. It's the best. What's, it's what's your favorite part about motherhood? The, my favorite part about motherhood is actually staying up with my baby. <laughs> that's, that's the first. <laughs> I know that's the first, right? Mm. Yeah. You know, there are those times that he just doesn't want to sleep. Mm. When I was just starting out, ish, I felt like it was a punishment. Mm. And yes, I did have people around me and they were so everybody just wanted to be with a baby. Okay. Mm. I had my sister who I was staying with then. She'd always, okay, at zero four, wake me up. And she would actually put alarms for mm -hmm. herself. Okay, zero four, I've come to get the baby and she'll get the baby. Mm. Yeah. But as time went on, you know, I began to grow with the baby and I would stay up with him because that's the, the, the time I get to bond with him. Mm -hmm. I get to know him. He gets to know mommy. We get to love. What is he like? We're, Pardon? What is he like? Oh, he's amazing. He's a happy baby. Yeah. He loves to laugh. He loves music so, so much. Mm -hmm. I'm a music director, by the way. So it's inborn. I'm uh -huh. sure even in him, he remembers <laughs> the time in the womb when mommy would sing to him. Mm -hmm. I introduced him to songs in the womb anyway. So he loves loves music. He's okay. a very, very happy baby. Yeah, and I he think we're ready to meet the baby. <laughs> we want to meet this year. I hope baby. he's not sleeping, but definitely I'll, I'll, I will give you a chance okay. to meet the baby. Okay. Yeah. So I think... Uh, we can meet the baby now. <laughs> and I want you to do sneeze. <laughs> There's life in sneezing. <laughs> I tell you. So what would you tell a woman, or sometimes even men, because sometimes I think we just put it on the woman mm -hmm. saying that it's men that are, uh, just women that are having these issues. But Very true. Even sometimes men are the ones that, are going through this issue mm. and they actually don't want to put it out there because mm. of how society would take mm. it. But what would you say to couples that are in their waiting season? Firstly, allow me to read a scripture. Is that mm. okay? Yes, yes. Please. Okay, so I'm going to be reading from Isaiah, Isaiah 66, and from verse 9, the Bible says, Shall I bring to birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith God? So this scripture kept me going to say, okay, this is God's desire that I bring forth. Mm. He can't give me a womb and shut it at the same time. Mm. That's contradicting himself. Mm. And so it says, shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb? Yeah, so be strengthened. Um, if you are there listening, um, yes, <laughs> be strengthened and hold on to God's word. Like I said earlier, if there's one lesson that I've come out with from all these five years in the wait uh would be faith uh patience as well as learning to totally wholly and completely trust god regardless of the uh, reports that you're going to receive you receive them you know but remember that there's god out there uh who's the source of all all joy yes you should learn to trust him and surely his word will come to pass in your life so don't lose hope your miracle is on the way amen amen so thank <laughs> you for watching the new creation show and remember the doctor's report can say something mm -hmm. but what is the report of the lord mm -hmm. and that is the one that you must ensure that you believe mm -hmm. the report of the lord so in your season of waiting for anything actually it could not be a baby but mm -hmm. whatever that you mm -hmm. are hoping God for, we hope that, we pray actually that God gives you that very thing because he wants you, mm. he wants to give you your heart desires. Mm. Thank you once again for watching. My name is Chikondi and see you next week. <laughs>